The fascinating thing about electric aviation is that it has created the possibility of entirely new aircraft designs, the likes of which we have never seen before. The lightweight yet powerful electric motors can be installed anywhere from the wingtips to the fin tips. The need for control surfaces is reduced because turning of the aircraft can be achieved by spinning the motors at different speeds. We can use multiple small propulsors instead of a few large ones. We can have no wings at all. We can recapture energy during landing. We can generate energy during flight using solar panels. But can we do more? We can indeed. In this video, we are going to learn some novel techniques that can be incorporated by electric aircraft to further improve flight characteristics. On this channel, Electric Aviation, we aim to bring for you the latest developments from the world of sustainable air travel. Subscribe today to get all of our updates. Coming up, we will be looking at some groundbreaking ideas that can make electric aircraft go further. These shape-transforming technologies include hovering wingtips, morphing and seamless wings. But first, let's have a look at a fascinating concept that DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, has been pursuing. It is called the DISC Rotor. The DISC Rotor is mounted on top of a compound aircraft and is used to house telescopic rotor blades. The blades are extended when the aircraft needs to take off or land, and are retracted when the aircraft is in cruise mode. This helps in eliminating the drag force substantially during forward flight. The patent for this concept was filed in 2010, and it was being applied in the development of a VTOL aircraft with 400 knots dash speed. Although this concept was meant for conventional propulsion systems, it is more easily adapted for electric aircraft. This is because the complex gear down transmission system to power the rotor blades with a conventional turbine engine will not be needed if instead an electric motor is used. Furthermore, the rotating disc can also be used for recapturing some of the energy that is being lost in pushing the aircraft forward by using the same motor as a generator. This concept is of great interest to the modern gyrodyne category electric aircraft that are being developed for urban air mobility. Even though Boeing was awarded the contract by DARPA, due to the classified nature of this program, there is very little technical information available. The rotor disc can be used in conjunction with another concept being developed by Piasecki Aircraft Corporation. It is the variable incidence wing, or the free wing. One of the problems of the compound aircraft is that the fixed wings underneath the main rotor come in the way of the rotor downwash. This reduces the efficacy of the large rotor during liftoff mode. Using this technique of making the wing parallel with the downwash nearly eliminates the downward drag and allows larger wings to be installed. The PA-890 compound aircraft is being designed on this concept and has a 12.3 meter wingspan. Piasecki have said that the PA-890 will be twice as aerodynamically efficient as a helicopter in terms of lift to drag ratio. The wings will do most of the lifting in cruise mode, allowing the rotor speed to be reduced by 70%, thus reducing the drag substantially. The aircraft will have lower energy costs and less complexity than a conventional helicopter. The design is also expected to have reduced loads and reduced vibration, as well as reduced failure rates. However, for the variable incidence wing to work, the forward propulsor should be housed not on the wing, but in the tail section. The next concept that is equally fascinating is the transforming rotor system that was used in Joby Aviation's Lotus UAV. In this concept, the two-bladed rotors mounted on the wingtip provide the upward thrust during takeoff and landing. During the cruise mode, the tip rotor blades close like a scissor and become an extended part of the wing. In EVTOL aircraft like the Cora that don't have tilt rotors or tilt wings, there are often several rotors that are used during the takeoff and landing phase. But in cruise mode, they serve no purpose other than increasing drag. 
As the current electric aircraft have very limited energy at their disposal, the component should be designed to serve more than one purpose where possible. This is why Joby's Lotus design is significant because in cruise mode the folded rotor blades increase the wing area by 15% and add to the lift. The Lotus design took its inspiration from NASA's Dos Samara UAV concept. The difference in NASA's design was that it used a single-bladed wingtip rotor. This caused structural issues of high cyclic loading and aerodynamic inefficiency. The Lotus addressed these with the two-bladed configuration, incorporating a very similar mechanism that transformed the surfaces from rotor blades to wingtips in seconds. According to Joby, the design is easily scalable for larger aircraft. This project unfortunately has been discontinued. A lot of people with knowledge of aerodynamics understand there is no single aerofoil shape that is ideal for all speeds and all missions. Aerofoil shapes differ vastly depending upon the requirement. There are airfoils that provide extremely high lift, but with a penalty of high drag. They have a deep camber and are used for relatively slow-moving, high-payload aircraft. On the other hand, fast-moving jets and interceptors have entirely different aerofoil cross-sections with low camber. Similarly, high-stability wings cross-section have a reflex trailing edge, while some airfoils have no camber and are symmetric. But what if we were able to change the wing shape as the flight conditions changed? For example, what if a passenger plane was flying empty to pick up passengers from a destination? Can we change the wing shape when the aircraft is loaded and when it is unloaded? Yes, now we can. Over time, there has been a lot of research done on the morphing wing technology. In 1999, NASA invented the microfiber composite, or the MFC, the MFC consists of rectangular piezo-ceramic rods sandwiched between layers of adhesive, electrodes, and polyimide film. If voltage is implied across it, it can bend and distort. When the electrical stimulus is removed, it relaxes back into its original position. Using this technology, morphing wings have been made that can change into several different types of cross-sections, depending upon the requirement. Even without using the complicated MFC material, there is another technology that can produce the same effect. It is called the Distributed Compliance Material Technology that was developed by a company called Flexis through the funding of AFRL, Air Force Research Laboratory, in the US. Many of you may have noticed that the actuation mechanism for flaps in the airfoil have several components and hinge joints that not only increase the weight and complexity of the aircraft, but also render the wing a discontinuous surface. This gap on the wing surface is very disruptive for the flow and results in increased drag. Through the use of distributed compliance, flaps can be created without joints, and flexible aviation-grade material can be used on the skin of the wing to form a continuous surface. The flexfoil material by the Flexis allows shape morphing for large controlled deformations from minus 9 degrees to plus 40 degrees. The flexfoil also permits discrete spanwise twists to reduce the induced drag and withstand external loads while keeping the wing a single, continuous surface. Aerodynamicists have known for a while that with a continuous wing surface, it is easier to increase the lift without increasing the drag. The application of flexfoil has shown drag reduction in the range of 5% to 12% for long-range fixed-wing aircraft. It has to be said, though, that this technology is applicable for all types of aircraft and not just electric. So these were a few of the technologies that electric aviation can benefit from. Please do use the comment section to inform us what you think about them and also the different voiceover. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.